Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can deploy ASP.NET Core Web API to iOS. I already deployed my bookstore's API to iOS and listed down the steps. So I'm going to go through the steps and talk about why do you have to perform the steps and how you can do it. So the first step is to make sure that the iOS is installed on your machine. To check that, I'm going to run a command called as option features which will open a window and list down the features which are already installed on your machine. Uh, you need to make sure that Internet Information Services is already installed. And in Internet Information System, make sure that World Wide Web Services and IS Management Console is already installed. If it's not installed, please install it and you might have to restart your machine. I already have it installed, so I should be able to search it in my startup window here. So if I just type in IIS, um, then I can open my IIS services. And here you can find your default website, which you should be able to browse on port 80. So you can see that this is IIS's uh, default page. So IIS is already installed on my machine. The next step is to install um, ASP.NET Core runtime module. I'm gonna share this link with you and this link will take you to the latest version of uh, Runtime Bundle. And this Runtime Bundle includes .NET Core and ASP.NET Core Runtime. And if you install it, then it will add ASP.NET Core, um, Core to your I Core as IS module to your IS if your IS is you know IS is installed on your machine. So if I currently check on my IS, uh, go to Modules. I don't see any. Uh, ASP.NET Core um, module installed on my modules here. Um, and if I go back to my Chrome and install this bundle, then um, it should install it should install um, the runtimes and uh, the module to my IIS. So if I go back uh, and check on my modules, you can see that ASP.NET Core module version 2 is installed on my IIS. So my IIS is ready to handle ASP.NET Core related requests. Okay, so the next step, the next step is to publish the project to a folder. So I'm gonna go to my Visual Studio and I'm gonna create a folder first. So I'm gonna go to my solution folder here and go to bookstores and create a folder here called this publish. And then I'm gonna create another folder in this because I have a front-end uh, app too. So that's going to be a different folder. I'm gonna call it Bookstores API for the API. And in this folder, we are going to, uh, we're going to publish our API. So I'm gonna right click on my web API and go to publish. And here, uh, Visual Studio will list down um, all the methods all um, all the areas where you can publish your uh, publish your web API. We're going to select folder and click on next. And by default, it'll give you the folder of you know the bin folder, bin release folder where you can publish your website. But we have already created a folder in which we are going to publish our web API. So if I go to data, GS drive, repo. Uh, Bookstores, publish, bookstores API. Okay, and I'm gonna click, uh, click on finish and then publish. So when I click, uh, click on publish, uh, you know, it'll build my application and uh, put all the assemblies in, in the folder that we selected where we wanted to publish our API. So if I click on this folder, it will open the folder and you can see that, you know, all the DLLs that we used for our web API are listed down here. Um, all the SQL related, all JWT, and all the dealers are uh, published in this folder. So the next step that we need to do, we need to refer, we need to create a website and refer our uh, website, IS website to this published folder. But before we do that, I'm going to change port of the default website to 90 because I want my website, uh, the new website, the bookstore website, the web API to, uh, to point it to uh, port 80. 
uh, and uh, not this default website. So I'm going to go right click and click on edit bindings, select the site bindings, edit it and say that the default website is going to port it to um, the, uh, the port of default website is going to be 90. Sweet. And then close this. And once we change this, then we're going to create uh, then we then we're going to create uh, a website with port 80, which we're going to link it to the published folder. So I'm going to go back to RIS and then click on right click on the sites, add website and name our website to bookstores API. Sweet. And in the physical path, I'm going to select the path that uh, path of the um, published folder. So I'm going to go to repo, um, bookstores, publish, and select bookstores API here. Sweet. And you can see that uh, our application is going to run on port 80 and click on OK. Sweet. And that's all you need to do to deploy your API to iOS. So if I uh, click on browse here, it's going to give me an error. Um, it's not going to give me an error, but if I go to my API here, I might have to restart my IS. So let's go ahead and restart the IS here. Restart the web API. And if I go back here and, um, you know, click on localhost API authors, get authors, that's uh, the link to get author number one. And this should return author from my web API. Now this is hosted on our IS. And I can even also, um, you know, use the Swagger, go to Swagger URL and open Swagger and, you know, try my API, execute the commands and it will list down all the authors in my system and I can test it out. I can even use my uh, IP address and go to the Swagger URL and then I should be able to you know, use this IP address in the machines which are in the network. You can open up your phone and go to this URL if the phone is in the same network and you should be able to use Swagger from your phone. Okay, one last thing. Actually, there are two things. Uh, when we created this bookstores API, it created an application pool. The application pool is uh, the .NET CLR version pointing to um, .NET 4. And this is something that you can change. You don't really have to change it, but it's recommended to change it to uh, no managed code because, you know, we are not using .NET, uh, .NET 4 framework runtime. This is um, our runtime is uh, it gets booted up in the worker process. So you don't really need to select the CLR to framework 4 or 2. So this will increase the performance of your application. So it's recommended to do it. So please do that. And if I change that, you know, um, change that and restart my API, uh, my eyes and go back here, I should still be able to browse my Swagger and test my APIs. And the second thing that I had to change is to uh, is the um, SQL Express uh, uh, connection string. So uh, when we started with the series, um, I used Windows authentication as the connection string in my uh, app settings. And I had to change it to server authentication, you know, create a server, um, server admin, and then set a password. And I had to use that connection string to make it work right um you know to get you know to browse the data from my eyes so please make sure you do that and yeah that's all you need to do to deploy your bookstores api to us if you have any questions you can reach out to me on twitter facebook i code live on twitch so if you want to come and say hello and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching bye